Hello Puppy Course and welcome back to my channel. Today is a story time, so you're not getting me before the intro. Because these stories are way too long. And I hope they're gonna be funny. But maybe they're just gonna be frustrating. Who knows? We'll see. Either way, you know the deal. Before we continue, y'all gotta get hydrated. So grab some water, or some tea, or whatever else you like to drink. And then we'll read some uh, stories. Are you hydrated? Good, let's go. Kevin wants entry-level responsibilities at assistant manager pay. Kevin used to be my assistant manager. Kevin would have one issue with a new payment app, call HR, like I told him, and then spend the next three hours of his shift saying how lazy and stupid our HR rep was. I've met her in person and she's not like that. Maybe call her on the hours she's working, but no. Kevin wants her to magically appear in her office first thing in the morning on a Sunday. Kevin was too lazy to make change in an unlocked drawer under the register and told an associate to make a sign demanding customers pay exact change. And now I'm still dealing with angry customers and corporate from that. Kevin also said pouring water into a humidor for a cigar room was above his pay grade. Even a toddler could do that in two seconds, but watching TikTok on the job is clearly more his pay grade. Kevin let him ban customers just because he found out the last manager, who he hates for no reason, banned them. He then gave me attitude when I said they were banned because he was touching me repeatedly and causing panic attacks after I told his this customer to stop repeatedly. I have a panic disorder for context. Kevin said he would be okay with taking extra hours to cover my vacation. On the first day, Kevin finally said he can't work that many hours because it'll make me sick and then quit on my third day while I was in a different country. Thanks Kevin, the trash took itself out. What? If you want to be a manager, you actually have to have some qualifications and you actually have to do some work. You know, like being a manager isn't all like fun and games, it's just like sitting around and being like, oh yeah, sure, you do this, you do that. Like you actually have to be able to like inspire your team or enforce the rules and like I feel like letting in banned customers is kind of the opposite of that. Um, so yeah, I feel like quitting was definitely the right choice for him because I don't think he was doing well in that job at all, but still the scenario itself kind of frustrating because if you say you're gonna cover for someone while they're on vacation, Sure, it's still your right to quit and never come back, but it's still kind of a dickhead move. <laughs> I think my dad is a Kevin, so here's my top six things he's done. To preface this, my dad is in his late 40s and is a generally intelligent man with shockingly little common sense. How he's made it this long, I'm not sure. Number one, he broke his legs climbing a helter skelter. He claims he was trying to get the mat back after he fell off it, but my grand says he definitely had the mat at the bottom. Either way, on his way up he slipped. Obviously, it's a slide and snapped his ankle. 2. Eight weeks later, he was at the hospital getting his cast off. He was so excited by this that he jumped down the hospital stairs and rebroke his ankle. They had to turn around and go straight back in and my grand made him explain to the doctor why he was back. 3. We were on a family trip to the beach. Me, my brother and my dad were exploring around an estuary. I spotted a top tier stick across the stream. I tested the bank with my foot, decided it was too slippy, told him it was too slippy and moved on. My dad, wanting to be a good dad, decided he'd go and get it for me anyways. As soon as one foot left the bank, his other slipped under him and all six feet of him disappeared. He managed to climb out a bit further down and had to do a walk of shame across the beach to my mom. He ended driving it home naked with coats tied around his waist and his high-vis jacket. All of the neighbors saw him get out of the car and walk into the house. 4. He works on a setup slash running side of motorsport. He got his car stuck in a ditch while pulling another car out of the opposite ditch and proceeded to lie down in a chicane made of huge black bales to try and reach his towing eye without getting into the ditch, which obviously leads to him getting run over by a van. He then proceeds to complete the event and drive 100 miles to our local A&E before getting it looked at because I was only run over a little bit. 5. He stapled his thumb to a sign with a staple gun. He put his thumb on the sign to hold it 
to the post and someone managed to place the staple gun around his thumb and fire it without moving his thumb. 6. In one day he slammed his fingers in two separate cardos. The first one broke it, the second broke it more. He then stapled his thumb to a sign again since the first incident he'd been using his finger to hold them, but that was smashed so he reverted back to his thumb. When he got back to the B&B &B and realized he left his trainers outside all day in the rain and then left his boots in the same place overnight. These are my favorite stories of him. He He's won the Muggs Merit Trophy from his motor club every year since 2019, including managing to be three quarters of the entrance one year. I have so many questions. Like if you do something incredibly dumb once, that's understandable. Like stapling stample your thing, like your thumb to a post once is incredibly stupid. Like, you know, maybe you should be like actually concentrating when you do something like that and realize you shouldn't. Maybe place your, your thumb somewhere where you're gonna like shoot the, shoot the gun thingy. Doing it once, fine. You know, like maybe you really like not fully, fully there. But okay, let's start at the top. You broke your leg while trying to climb something. Like honestly, like you wouldn't think like even if you slept that you would actually like break your leg. So not even coming for that. But if you break something and then get the cast off that you want for like two months, maybe, maybe be careful with said body part because guess what? It was just like literally cast for two months or even if it's just like a month, the muscles are gonna be frigging gone so there's nothing supporting the bone, really, all too much. So maybe be careful with that, you know, like, what are you doing? And honestly, if for the third part where he got, or like was trying to get a snake, I love that he had to do a walk of shame and like let everyone kind of saw him like half naked, just kind of like, huddled in clothes that don't look like they're they're supposed to be on that body part you know like having coats tied around your waist that's hilarious like maybe if you want to go somewhere to be a good dad do it carefully it's it's funny if you don't though <laughs> and also number four i was only run over a little bit that's a sentence i didn't think i'd hear today because I guess with adrenaline, like, injuries often hurt less at first because you're just, like, so shocked that are so full of adrenaline, especially in, like, motorsports, that you probably don't notice it as much at first. But still, saying I was only run over a little bit is kind of funny. <laughs> so, honestly, it just... How do you manage to be so clumsy you break two fingers or, like, one finger twice in the same day? That's just impressive. <laughs> Kevin ruins the possibility of me getting a girl's number because of his refusal to read the room. So, a way, 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 way the fuck out of my league waitress where I was eating came up to talk to me while I was smoking a cigarette. She's playing the guess my age game, talking about relationships, all the usual signs. Kevin, who I was eating with, comes outside as she's complaining about a pill addicted customer. Apparently, the only thing he had was pills, because he started explaining to everyone what good smack is and saying how he would have asked her for some pills. The girl bolts like nobody's business. As somebody who can read the room, I am 100% certain that if I ever had a chance at the girl's number, this man ruined it. Fuck. Generally, I don't get people who like bolt into other people's conversation like that. Like, you obviously see a friend talking with a woman. Um, so if you would just like casually walk up to them to see what they're talking about because you don't immediately catch on that they're flirting, maybe, but just bolting in on just like one word you hear into someone else's conversation just seems rude in general. What are you doing? But yeah, he definitely ruined it. He definitely ruined it for you. <laughs> a wild Kevin appears in the workplace. So I have a new co-worker who thankfully does not work in the same area as me, but is in the next room over. He's very nice, but something about him makes you want to automatically be mean to him, which isn't right, but it is what it is. I have several stories about this new co-worker, but I think this one is my favorite. 
Kevin comes into the area I work with my other three co-workers with a bag of coffee. My boss, who we will call B, and my one co-worker, who we will call D, and my other co-worker, who we will call R. Kevin. Can I use your coffee grinder here? I drink a lot of coffee, and so do the people in my household. All of us, I'm sure. Mind you, this is during the workday, and everyone seems pretty busy, so it seemed like an odd request, but whatever. Kevin stares at the machine a little dumbfounded. Goes to my boss, B, and asks, Can you grind this for me? I don't know how to turn it on. B says, press the button on it, it's not rocket science. Kevin, after a couple of minutes of staring at the machine, bless him, figures out where the on button is. Grants a small amount of coffee, then empties it into a separate bag. We all think, okay, he is done, that seems like a good amount. We were so wrong. Kevin spent the next 30 to 45 minutes grinding a whole bag of coffee that I came to find out was expired. When he was finally done, R, D, and B and I stared at each other and wonder if that really just happened. Later that day, I had to go over to his work area and come to find out that he left the giant bag of ground up coffee at his desk. The next day, Kevin comes in again to grind up more coffee. I kind of snap and ask him if he didn't have enough coffee, like please don't die of a caffeine overdose. Thankfully, Kevin seems to have gotten the message and has yet to come and grind coffee for an obscene amount of time. Note, the giant bags of ground up coffee sat on his desk for several days. I can only imagine the uproar this caused at his house since they drink so much coffee. What? Like, in a way, I kind of understand. Like, if you have, like, a coffee grinder at work or something, going there to grind coffee and then taking it home, if you do it during the work, work day, it still seems kind of rude. But still, like, I can understand doing that. But doing it during the work day, or especially if the machine is next to people who are trying to concentrate on their work, when it's, like, super loud, like a coffee grinder, is stupid. And then leaving it at your desk is even worse, especially if it's not just one bag, if it's more than that. Especially if you do it with the excuse of, oh, we drink a lot of coffee at home. Maybe actually take it home. Like, what else did this dude do? I'm curious, are there more stories? Please tell me you eventually posted the other stories, because... Some people. I think sometimes I wonder why I didn't become a psychologist, because these people are just interesting to me. Like, what the fuck happened? <laughs> An old anecdote. This was back in the late 1990s. Kevin was part of our friend group, and also the oldest of us. We were all late teens, early 20s, he was 25 or so. He was not um, the brightest bulb. I just remember this defining moment. One night, we all went down to the corner store for some snacks. Pepsi was running a promotion where every bottle had a word printed under the cap. If he could form certain sentences, you want stuff, usually another Pepsi product. As we were opening our stuff, Kevin gets a very confused look on his face. He studied the bottle cap for a good while before he says, W, comma, I? It was the word I am, or I'm. Okay, listen. <laughs> I'm not even saying that if I was like super tired or something, I would also just sit there and be like, wait, this doesn't seem right. But maybe before saying that out loud and making a fool of yourself, maybe turn it around so you don't look stupid. But honestly, this is kind of like harmless stupid. It's not distracting people from the work or just annoying them with being like excessively loud or like seriously injuring yourself by getting run over or stapling your thumb. This seems kind of harmless stupid at least. <laughs> Which just makes it so much funnier. Okay, I'm not sure if he was a Kevin or just completely ignorant. There was a kid I went to high school with who was two grades below me. Somehow he thought lactose intolerant means you could drink chocolate milk, but not white milk. He put like six of seven packets of salt on everything, even ketchup. I'm not sure how these two things are related, but that is a lot of salt. Like how do you how do you how are you still alive? But lactose intolerant? Wouldn't it mean you could drink normal milk, but not chocolate milk? Because usually people are intolerant to, like, people of color. But either way, I think 
I think he just got incredibly, incredibly confused, which is kind of a Kevin move. Then someone commented, I went to school with a girl who thought color blindness means you mixed colors up. I showed her a blue pen and asked what color it was. She said purple. I showed her a purple pen and asked what color it was. She said blue. I called her out on her logic, but she started fake crying and I got called a bitch for making her cry. <laughs> Some people. Okay, to be fair, as a colorblind, I do get a lot of colors wrong, but I don't think I've ever reversed two colors. Yeah, I mean, like, if you're colorblind and don't see colors well, getting the colors wrong is kind of understandable. But, yeah, um, it still seems kind of weird, but not as funny as the chocolate milk one. That just, it baffles me. Like, how do you, how do you get this confused about lactose intolerant? Like, just... Just how? I, I, I really, I don't understand his logic behind it. At all. <laughs> Which might be a good, good, good sign for me and my brain. But, but I'm still confused. <laughs> Kevin's a straight man. Kevin was from upcountry where people are friendly, dumb, intolerant, and close-minded. In short, thick and dense, and probably better off as building materials. Part of this was their attitude to sexuality, hyper-heterosexuality, where homosexuality and suicides in the country were linked. Kevin, thus, wasn't just dumb, not the point, but he was very dumb, but also apparently had something to prove. This one part of his sexcapades, which was entirely credible, was his stalking of a girl. He invited us for a night stalking, drove to a farm and found a piece of dirty cloth tied to the front gate. He carefully untied it and stole it as a souvenir. I asked why he'd even want something she'd have only used to wipe her daddy hands upon. He rounded on me that she did not have dirty hands. Silly me. She worked on a farm though. Well anyways. Then there was the other woman, an older one from the same community he was using for sex. If so, his concept of who was using whom was a little off. As in criminal charges for raping a minor off, but as... But as I intimate, she probably didn't exist. She apparently appeared and disappeared as a phantasm and suddenly they were having sex with him whenever we weren't looking and then vanishing again. Schrodinger's girlfriend. Kevin visited us in the big smoke. He was very excited as he believed it was socially acceptable to dress in fancy costume in the city, despite no one and no thing ever suggesting this to him. One day he vanished for some hours saying he wanted to visit the zoo and returned saying the older women had fortuitously appeared in the area outside, despite the unlikelihood she had spontaneously travelled across the entire continent, and they'd had sex, of course. On top of his wobbling tower of sexual justification, Kevin had one more masterstroke. A famous actor on TV had the same name as him, therefore they must be related. And the actor's match roles only went to validate him by proxy, right? We never let on. The area outside the zoo was the city's gay beat. If you got picked up for sex there, it probably wasn't to be going to be hetero. And the actor, the most notorious homosexual of his day, of course. Kevin eventually moved to the city, never wore costumes in public, but did have a side gig as a burglar, particularly in targeting people he already knew were not close. Okay. Lying about your sex life? and kind of pretending to be someone you know because you might be ashamed or don't want to admit that you're gay. I kind of understand. Of course I think it's ridiculous because there's literally nothing wrong with being gay but I know a lot of people have issues with it. So you know, I can kind of understand. Robbing the people you know and that you maybe like care about, that is dumb shit. That is kind of where I have to draw the line on the story. Like. I feel like a lot of people make up like fake stories about their sex life because they want to seem cool or like they, they've done more than they've done because they feel kind of kind of like they're missing out or something. Like especially if they're like very young. Kind of understandable. But mm, maybe try making it believable. I guess. You know? Like if you just said oh you you ran into someone at the zoo and you had great chemistry and you hit it off and you ended up hooking up or whatever. Fine, but saying like someone else who lives all the way across the country randomly showed up in the exact same minute you were there at the zoo. Like lying 101, make it actually believable, you know? I, I, 
kind of figured that makes sense, but oh well. Um, Kevin, I have a science degree. I am a shift supervisor of a retail drugstore chain. Another shift supervisor is a 71 year old Kevin. He is a conspiracy theorist and refuses to learn anything new. I'm usually the one covering a lot of the tasks he doesn't know how to do. We've tried teaching him, but he's unteachable. He also goes on constant rants about conspiracy theories. Literally, they are nonsense. He once showed me a picture he claimed was a ton of money seized from a drug lord. It was clearly photoshopped and a poor photoshop as well. Quick background about me. I have a bachelor's of science degree in maths. I took quite a few physics and chemistry classes while getting my degree. Some unfortunate events and poor choices after college caused me to fall apart. I am currently just working this job to help pay my bills while I piece my life back together. I don't keep my degree a secret, nor do I show it off either. I'm in the office doing some admin work when Kevin walks in to grab a few prints out. Kevin starts talking about how the COVID vaccine will change our chromosomes and when I interrupt him and say, Kevin, I have a science degree. I've heard him say this stuff to other employees as well. Kevin decides to change the topic and starts talking about mind-altering toxic chemicals in our water. Again, I interrupt him and say in a louder, firmer voice, Kevin, I have a science degree, don't start this with me. Kevin continues with his ranting, so I interrupt him again and start making my way out of the office. In an even louder and firmer voice, I say, Kevin, I have a science degree and walk out. I actually like having a battle of wits with people, especially ones who are ignorant and unprepared like Kevin. However, work is not a good place to have them. Social media kind of is. Had I not walked out, I probably would have gone into my own rant about basic chemistry, pointing out how his statements are full of shit. The next day, I had a small talk conversation with my manager about my little incident with Kevin. We both had a nice laugh about it. Manager agrees that when it comes to scientific knowledge, I probably outrank everyone in the store, minus Hamsi, and that work is an inappropriate place for that to happen. However, if Kevin does try this on me again, I am more than welcome to bury him. Kevin came into work a few hours later and greeted me like nothing had happened. I did see my manager later talk to Kevin. He is to hoping Kevin knows how to avoid me when it comes to a battle of the scientific wits. However, being that he's a Kevin, I doubt that will happen. Okay, please tell me that if he actually does, because eventually he will bring something up again, that, she, that you actually are able to just like throw facts at him. Like, honestly, it's gonna be pointless because no matter what you say and how logical it is what you say, because it is kind of what you studied, I doubt that anything is gonna stick in his brain or that you're actually gonna convince him that his theory is bullshit. You know, because I feel like people who are this far down the rabbit hole of conspiracy theories, they see logic in things that isn't logic, but actual logic and facts is just brainwashing, apparently, I think, to a lot of people. So I doubt it's going to be useful, but I think it's going to be hilarious, and I think you would really enjoy it. So please tell me it happened, and please tell me you're going to post an update of all the stupid things he says then, because he's like going to try to debunk you, which is not going to work. It's not going to work. Like to, to every person standing on the outside, even if they don't know anything about science, it's probably going to make more sense to them what you're saying. But still. Please tell me there's an update. Anyways, that was all the stories for today. I really miss doing story time. I feel like there's like I've only done this two or three times, uh, and I feel like we have to do this more often because it's just, it's just funny. We've done like entitled parent stories before. <laughs> frustrating, a lot more frustrating than the Kevin's are somehow actually. But anyways, I hope you enjoyed our story time, and I hope you hydrated and I'll be back with my next video. But I'm currently thinking about maybe going down to four days because I've been really busy lately. So I don't know, see you in a couple of days, I guess. 